in terms sort of of causes and effects. So what are the effects that, no sorry, what are the causes? I have not gotten better at playing the French horn since I was in, honestly, 11th grade. I mean, I have, I have like a lot of mature, more maturity as a musician, more experience playing, definitely, you know, just more gigs under my belt. I approach music in a, in a, more, in a, in a better way. <clears throat> I'm less overwhelmed by the whole aspect of performing and overwhelmed by my instrument. But in terms of like, just output, I haven't really improved since I was 17 years old. And it kind of took me a while to realize that that is what was discouraging me. And why really over the past four years, I haven't played much. And over the past two years, I have not played once. I took my horn out at the start of the pandemic cleaned it, oiled it, played it a few days, and then put it away and promptly never touched it again because it wasn't sounding good. And I had this lack inside of me where I, I just felt like I was, I was missing something. I had kind of fallen out of love of the sound of the horn. And it was really one of the things that was depressing me. This is something I need to like think about, right, how to write about <clears throat> mental health in a way that is intelligent and not just like waving the flag of hardship a little bit. But causes. I have not improved. My last memories of the sound and the horn and how I treat the horn are bad memories I don't my relationship with it feels tarnished right and the whole point of this project is to undo that tarnishing and see if I can build something and the thing that I have never been able to do really is practice consistently I spend a lot of time playing in groups. I spend a lot of time thinking about the music and actually like considering how it should be played, which is, you know, not to be discounted. I spend a lot of time teaching the horn. I spent a lot of time even watching lessons, watching master classes, but not nearly enough time playing. Once I got good enough where I was sort of considered a weak professional player <laughs> like a, a prof you know where I could be considered a professional player which was when I was like 17 I just basically stopped trying to get better actively because I was scared that if I tried it was gonna prove that I had a ceiling whereas if I didn't really try it just meant that I was doing just fine and <clears throat> basically plateauing, right, for four years and then not playing for two years has chalked that up firmly in my mind as sort of a failure. And in a lot of ways, I let this way of thinking dictate the way I approach life in general, especially over the past, like through, through college. Approaching things sort of with fear and trying to find the least, the, the path of least resistance. And all that that results in is, is FOMO. You have FOMO about the, you have, you know, fear that you missed out, fear that you are missing out, and fear that you're gonna miss out, along with the fear of failure, right? <clears throat> because like, no one is 
just doing what they're doing. Everyone is trying at what they're doing. And unless you're trying really hard, you're not going to be with the other interesting people who are trying really hard. You're going to be all by yourself, which has sort of been the box which I've put myself in. And the project here is kind of ambitious, starting from, I think it was like, <clears throat> I'm going to say the 10th of April than this, but probably more like the 15th of April, right, to the 20th of May. Basically one and a half, one and a half months, six weeks. You have six weeks to not react with fear. You have six weeks to get up every day and practice as hard as you can, within, within, within reason, right? This is taking into account the fact that I understand how practicing the horn works and how important it is to restrain yourself from destroying your face when you don't have all the muscles built up. Because a lot of the strain is, and look, look this up, look the muscles of the face up. We can, you can talk about that for like a page, honestly. Is just this like little ring, right? And when you suck at playing, you press very hard at the horn on your face. You put a lot of strain on those little muscles. And those are the weakest ones. Talk about those muscles, these muscles, the muscles in the jaw, and of course the diaphragm that you really use. Um, yeah. myself putting strain here. Yeah, you know. So yeah, let's gonna get back on track a little bit. <clears throat> I think that is the plan, right? To react. To just basically practice from a place of strength for six weeks, just completely devote myself to playing and practicing and bringing myself back without worrying about where I was or where I'm going to be. Basically just devote myself to learning. And the best way to devote yourself to learning is to give yourself something that's very difficult, where mastery is kind of out of the question because it's generally, you know, a little bit beyond your capabilities. And when you give yourself this sort of like insurmountable task, it's because there's no like quick and easy success. And there's also no failure, really. The only failure is if you're not working at it. And the success just comes from like chipping away at it as you can, right? And so that's that's kind of my plan. And I actually did it. Every day I every day I practiced. Every day I thought about horn. Every day I tried my best to make myself enjoy the sound of the horn and sort of went back through all of these memories that were a little bit painful because I had stepped away from all of this and because I was ashamed. because I was ashamed of how little I'd progressed or how I had let opportunities slip through my fingers. Whereas in reality, they're actually pretty good memories. And it was nice to kind of sit here and, you know, have a camera on me so I have to... You'll, you'll, you'll see sometimes in those practice videos I kind of trail off and I'm lost in thought and it's, it's nice. It's actually revisiting a lot of these experiences in a positive way. And, yeah, just, you know, I played, I played so much horn that it deformed, I played so much horn that it deformed my body. <laughs> like, I had, I had these, um, I had this gigantic muscle here, and this gigantic muscle here, this tiny little muscle here, just from, albeit incorrectly holding holding the horn so you know it was really a part of my body and that's also been a part of this just you know coming 
comfortable once again with the horn. <clears throat> Just here, where it's supposed to be. The hip on the hip and the fresh, you know, and loving it. Loving this really beautiful special instrument. That is really not widely known, actually. You know? Realized. <laughs> Okay, and then effects. I mean, I did it. I practiced every day. I got myself back into the swing of things. I reconnected with a teacher who I had sort of just left when I stopped playing. I've been somewhat successful at, at cracking this concerto. It's not going to be perfect by any means, but there's just a lot of areas where I've made serious progress and I'm like excited about making the progress, which is sort of a new chapter. Because I'm also very, very shy, a very, very, have serious stage fright when it comes when it comes to performing I really enjoy being kind of anonymous within the orchestra well, you know brass players always kind of have a joke that <clears throat> you could show up wearing your tuxedo jacket and like butt naked from the waist down and it doesn't matter because they can, <laughs> can only see you from here up <coughs> <coughs> not the case with these panning ass cameras but, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. I guess that's that. Well, it's really, it's actually made me appreciate. It's really made me appreciate the horn once more. Which is, is, is so sad that I had lost, I had lost that feeling for a while, you know. I had, I had really lost the love that I have for this instrument. And I didn't realize that that was, that was at the heart of it. <laughs> it was like a very powerful relationship had been taken from me. It was sitting, you know, it's sitting right there, but kind of inaccessible. And I think I, I, I think I very, I'm just saying it right now, but I, I very quickly realized, realized how important that is, that this relationship is to me. And I think, yeah, a part of part of that need for anonymity is being kind of like, you know, shame kind of like qualifying everything about this instrument, you know? Because one of the problems with the French horn, it's not like you play guitar and someone comes up to you and says, hey, play this tune, and you're like, okay, yabba dabba dabba do, you know? It's like, okay, let me warm up for 10 minutes and then tune my horn and then play you a version of that song. <laughs> you know, something, something like that. But... <laughs> Scenario, right? So now, where do I want to go with this? Where I want to go is that I want to keep playing. You know? And
there's something about this project which is it's personal <sighs> just because I basically you know with the exception of my family and my partner and like one good friend I've basically been on my own for this for this entire year so it is it is personal this isn't this isn't a this isn't really for anyone else this that, that, which is just why I'm being so candid I think and spending so much time talking about myself and my kind of my my personal feelings like how do they relate how what well, why are my just just my feelings important enough to to talk about my project that's about you know my achievements well I've been in my head for the last year there's there's been nothing else right I've been I've been on a little island called the shawl I shouldn't use that sound. That's not going into my opening. There's no way. So it is. It is worth it to talk about like this because it's, because it's true. You know. This is. This is sort of a, a proxy victory, for all those times that I've kind of like let avoidance win in the past few years not been been unable been unable to cope with with expectations given up and then let relationships suffer and this is this is finally kind of like a fitting fitting proxy for that I've been doing so much better with that as, as, as a whole in the past year But this is really, really a victory in that sense. And in that way, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Okay. This was supposed to be, this, was, this is just like a brainstorming session. I'm going to turn this off, do a little maintenance, and then listen back and write up some notes from this. But I may actually end up just posting this to the channel, depending on how. I cringe when I hear the sound of my own voice. We'll see. <laughs>